Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The topic of this video is automatic transmissions. An automatic transmission is composed of three sections, the torque converter, the shifting mechanism, and the hydraulic control system. This video will explain the torque converter and the shifting mechanism. The function of a torque converter can be likened to two electric fans facing each other. A fan generates airflow, and it hits and rotates the blades of the other fan. In a torque converter, the rotating blades are referred to as the pump impeller, and the blades that are rotated are called the turbine runner. The medium for transmitting power is not air but oil, and this oil is referred to as automatic transmission fluid, ATF. In an actual torque converter, the flow of power makes a 180 degree turn. The power is transmitted in the following order. From the engine, to a drive plate fixed to the rear end of the crankshaft. To the torque converter case. To a pump impeller fixed to the torque converter case. And finally to the turbine runner that can rotate freely, which then outputs power to the transmission side. The inside of the torque converter case is filled with ATF. A torque converter primarily serves two functions. One of them is the power flow cutoff function. When the torque converter is rotating, applying brakes to the turbine runner allows it to stop the turbine runner, while the pump impeller continues rotating. This state is referred to as, torque converter is slipping. This feature allows the engine to continue running, while coming to a stop at a red traffic light. Another function is torque amplification. First, let's observe the operation in cases where there is a significant difference in rotation speed between the pump impeller and the turbine runner, such as during launch or acceleration. For easier understanding, let's use a red ball instead of the ATF to explain. When the pump impeller rotates, the ball moves outward along the blade of the pump impeller, and then is transferred to the turbine runner side. At this point, because the ball also has velocity in the direction of torque converter rotation, it strikes the blade of the turbine runner, causing the turbine runner to rotate. The ball moves along the blade of the turbine runner toward the inner circumference, and returns to the pump impeller side. At this point, because the ball's velocity in the direction of torque converter rotation is slower than the pump impeller's rotation speed, when the ball strikes the blade of the pump impeller, it hinders the rotation of the pump impeller. This reduces the efficiency of the torque converter. To prevent this phenomenon, torque converters incorporate a stator between the pump impeller and the turbine runner. With the stator, the ball hits the stator blade and change its direction before returning to the turbine runner. Because the ball's velocity in the direction of torque converter rotation is faster than the pump impeller's rotational speed, the ball pushes and accelerates the pump impeller. Through this, when there is a significant difference in rotational speed between the pump impeller and the turbine runner, such as during launch or acceleration, the torque converter can amplify torque. When the speed difference between the pump impeller and the turbine runner becomes small, the ball, which can change its direction by the stator hinders the rotation of the pump impeller. To prevent this phenomenon, the stator is equipped with a one-way clutch. Thanks to the one-way clutch, the stator only rotates in one direction. As a result, when the speed difference between the pump impeller and the turbine runner is small, the stator rotates and the ball does not hinder the rotation of the pump impeller. Even when a car is cruising at a constant speed, because oil is used for power transmission, 100% efficiency can't be achieved. And it leads to decreased fuel efficiency. To prevent this, the torque converter is equipped with a lockup clutch. When under certain conditions, the lockup clutch mechanically connects the torque converter case and the output shaft. Control of the engagement and disengagement of a one way clutch, and the generation of clamping force, are achieved by altering the direction of ATF flow in the torque converter. This graph illustrates the range where the torque converter locks up, based on vehicle speed and accelerator pedal opening angle. 
The pink area represents the lockup range for a model introduced in the 2000s, while purple represents the lockup range for that model's previous generation. The car with the pink range locks up the torque converter at the moment it launches, and maintains lockup during all driving conditions. Similarly to this car, since the 2000s, torque converters have been primarily used as a launch device rather than a torque amplification device. The shifting mechanism consists of planetary gears and hydraulic multiplate clutches. If you are not familiar with planetary gears and hydraulic multiplate clutches, please watch the video, What is Planetary Gear and Hydraulic Multiplate Clutch, before watching this video. The link is provided in the description. This automatic transmission is a typical 4-speed AT, with two sets of planetary gear and five hydraulic multiplate clutches. The left figure is a cross-sectional view, and the right figure is a 3D view of the planetary gears. The power from the torque converter is input into the rear sun gear, and output to the tire side from the rear planetary carrier. The rear planetary carrier and the front internal gear are always connected. In the P and D ranges, all clutches are disengaged, and the rear planetary pinions rotate idly, resulting in no power output. In the first gear of the D range, clutch D and clutch E are engaged, and the rear internal gear and the front planetary carrier are locked to the transmission case, preventing them from rotating. As a result, the input from the torque converter is reduced in speed by the rear planetary gear, and then output. In the second gear of the D range, clutch A and clutch D are engaged, the front sun gear is locked, and the front planetary carrier is connected to the rear internal gear. Similar to the first gear, the rear planetary gear reduces the speed, but the rear internal gear can rotate, resulting in a lower reduction ratio compared to the first gear. In the third gear of the D range, clutch C and clutch D are engaged, connecting the rear sun gear, the front planetary carrier, and the rear internal gear. As a result, front and rear planetary gears rotate as a unit, and the input rotation is transferred to the output without reduction. In the fourth gear of the D range, clutch A and clutch C are engaged. The rotation inputs to the front planetary carrier, and the front sun gear is locked. The input rotation speed is increased at the front planetary gear, and then output from the front internal gear through the rear planetary carrier. In the R range, clutch B and clutch E are engaged. The rotation inputs to the front sun gear, and the front planetary carrier is locked. The input rotation is reversed by the front planetary gear, and then output from the front internal gear through the rear planetary carrier. This graph depicts the progression of number of steps in an automatic transmission. By around 1940, GM had already developed a 4-speed automatic transmission. Subsequently, the era of 4-speed continued for approximately 50 years. Of course, during that period, there were also two-speed and three-speed automatic transmissions. In 1989, Nissan introduced a five-speed automatic transmission, followed by BMW's six-speed in 2001, Mercedes-Benz's seven-speed in 2002, Lexus's eight-speed in 2006, Land Rover's nine-speed in 2011, and Honda's ten-speed automatic transmission in 2015. Although the 4-speed automatic transmission had been lasted for 50 years, it evolved to a 10-speed in just 26 years. However, with the increasing adoption of battery EVs and hybrid vehicles, it is unlikely that further multi-speed developments in automatic transmissions will continue in the future. In other words, it might be said that historically, Honda's 10-speed it is the automatic transmission with the most gears. In addition, as you have watched, a 4-speed ATs uses two sets of planetary gear, while 5- and 6-speed ATs uses three sets of planetary gear, and from 7- to 10-speed ATs employs four sets of planetary gear. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.